Welcome back to the YouTube channel. It's your favorite village boy, Mr. Ghana, baby. And I'm back again with another video from South Sudan. I know you all have missed me and you all are expecting new videos from Somalia and Somaliland. Wait for it. I will definitely be bang with bangers. Just chill. But you know what? I still got videos from South Sudan and I have to release it. We've been so busy working so hard to bring you guys fresh content. But hey, the main reason why I went to South Sudan was to promote small businesses in South Sudan. You know, South Sudan is actually a young country. So the people in that country who have started business are just young so all businesses in south sudan are definitely small businesses and um i was so impressed to see what young people are doing to change the narratives of their own country so hey do me a favor like the video share and subscribe as we talk to the youngest ceo who decided to establish the share butter business in the country If I didn't come to this country, like I will think that it's only Ghana that makes share butter. Well, now you know better. I also thought that in the first place. Really? Yeah, but we do have plenty of share butter and plenty of share trees. It's just that sometimes the preparation styles differ. Oh, okay. Yeah. So like you make everything in here? Yes, from scratch. All we do is to import, I mean, bring the nuts from the Lakes region, which is where we get our name. But is it also in um, your Yes, country, in South, South Sudan. Sudan, yes. The Lakes region is in Bahar Ghazal. So where the Nile crosses South Sudan. And then we bring everything here and do the production all the way here. Wow. Yeah. And who are the people who does the production? Well, currently I use the wives of soldiers because in South Sudan, wives are usually housewives. And their, their husbands are the ones that usually work. And salaries don't, don't always come. So now in this area, soldiers live here. So I just use their wives and bring in the little storage facilities here. Oh, that's inspirational. But let me know, my name is Maya. You never told me your name. My name is Estella. Estella? Yeah. Born Estella. and raised in Juba? Yes. No, born, not born and raised in Juba. I was born here and then moved to the East Africa, of course, during the crisis. Okay. Uh, so I moved to East Africa, did part of my education in East Africa, okay. and then moved on to my bachelor in Malaysia, okay. and then my master's in China, and then I came back here. You went to China? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I was also based in China, you know that? Yeah. You speak Chinese? No. Basic Chinese, like Basic ni, hao, ni hao. How to get some food. <laughs> That's pretty much it. And yeah. um, why you have to come back here? You should have stayed in Malaysia or China. Well, first of all, this is home. There's no feeling like just being home. Okay. You know? uh, I remember that whenever I'd come back from either China or, or you know, Malaysia, just there's that feeling at the airport that you feel like I'm going to go back home. Because when I'd come back, I don't necessarily come directly to South Sudan because we don't have flights that come in here. I would come to maybe Uganda or Kenya and then transit. Oh, okay. But that just that feeling of being in Africa and just being home was amazing. And I don't think there's anything that beats that. And um, what really inspired you to start a share butter uh, company in here? So aside from me using the share butter myself, because previously I used to get it from northern Uganda. And I used to take it to school with me and whenever it would finish, I would just send for more. And then I came back here and one time I asked my grandfather to smell the shea butter that I had. And he said, this was shea butter. But then I had seen it here before. The difference was in preparation styles. The one that they used to prepare here, they would darken, roast too much, and then it would become dark. Mm. And even the smell was a bit too, too much to use on your skin. Okay. And so um, I had some, you know, looked on YouTube and then I was able to see how it was prepared. I got one lady at that time that was able to do the pounding and the grinding for me and then they got out some oil for me and it was perfect. So I started using it myself. I'd give it to gifts uh, to my friends as gift, my family as gifts and then slowly when I saw that everybody, I mean people slowly liked it and then we, we moved on to producing it at Lightscape. So which means you redefined the use of shea butter in South Sudan. I think I did. I think I did. Because now we have we have a bunch of companies that are actually dealing in shea butter. I'm not sure if they produce here, but I know that there's people that are actually into shea butter now. I mean, can you take us around a little bit um, where you keep your nuts and that? Uh, yes, I mean, yes, like yes. So this is our little village. I don't yeah. know if it works well. It's a shea well butter village, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, if it works well as the village you used to, but this is our little village. Okay. So partly the women live in some of these um, tukuls, we call them tukuls. Okay. And then this is our working space. Okay. Yeah, so this is our working space and this is the machine that we use oh okay for, even making the work easier yes because before they used to pound and grind we do have the motor in there they used to pound and grind but then it's too much work and they also do not produce so much in a day mm. so when the demand grew we saw it was better for them to have a machine because then they are able to produce efficiently without you know being tired the whole day wow. so yeah that's pretty much it so come with me so because the space is a little small and we're a growing okay. little company we saw our water here and then we just use the space for most of the work uh, here are the nuts so these are nuts that have sort of already been sorted and dried mm. and we just keep them here they have a very good shelf life so we don't have to worry about uh, whether or not they're gonna get spoiled as long as it's properly dried mm. then it's fine now these are the nuts that have not yet been shelled this is the process before you get to this so this is the seed that's inside the fruit okay. when you get the fruit it's green then you eat the fruit then this comes out this is dried and then shelled because if you can see there is um so if you hit this a little bit i'll just maybe do yeah so that from okay, that, okay. that's the nut. Whoa. That is this. We have a, a, a sheer fruit. Yes, there's a fruit. It's green in color. We don't have it here because they also have a very low shelf life. As soon as it's plucked from the tree, you must almost eat it instantly. If you don't, then it doesn't last long. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a lot, man. But is it difficult to get this nut in here? No, actually, no, because god has blessed us they grow by themselves you don't have to water them nobody plants them they just grow so they mainly grow in south sudan they mainly grow in the lakes region mm. which is a ramweer and uh, in some parts of the equatoria mm. but i source these from the lakes yeah and then so we store partly the nuts here and also some of our produce here now the way that this uh, structure is made the mud because South Sudan is hot. It's very hot. It helps us keep the the butter in shape. Because if you put it outside right now, yeah. it could it could literally melt. Uh, melt. Um, let's just take you through. You can even tell that this has been produced a while ago. But because of the heat, you can tell that it's it just you can if you can look here, the oil yeah, is the coming oil is up because problem. of the heat. Can I touch it? Yeah. Now this came from a fridge. So you can see that it's a bit harder than, oh, yeah. than that yeah, that was stored, uh, that was solidified yeah, naturally. It so good. Yeah. So then we move from here. We have the preparation. So this is mainly like the storage room where yeah. we keep stuff, we keep our utensils. And then the women do the preparation outside. Because of the heat of the fire, we'd rather they stay and cook in a place that they can get some air conditioning. Yeah. So they, this machine, because of the way that uh, it works, if you can tell, it has already made holes. So this cannot be put inside because of its movement. Exactly. And also it needs to constantly be watered so that it stays cool and it's able to do the production easily. Uh, so yeah, this is chill spot and the cooking area. Area. Yeah, now we have some of the butter, some of the nuts that have been roasted and grinded. Now these are ready to be put into the boiling process, which is where you get to extract the oils. To boil them? Yeah, you have to boil the pest in order to get the oils out. How long? Oh, it takes about an hour, an hour, 30 minutes for the oil to start coming on top. And then you can already start putting. Inadequate. I help you. Yes, okay. Oh, yes. So the water has to be really hot. It has to be re to have really boiled. Then they'll start putting in the paste, and you can see we basically use sticks because we want something longer. Because once it starts boiling, it starts to what is it called? Do they do they call it bubbling? Yeah. I don't know. It starts to bubble up and and yeah, like that and then it could easily get on the skin. So they'll do that for another hour or so until the oils start coming on top. 
Yeah. Yeah. Once the oils come on top, uh, do blend a kupsha. Let me kupsha. But I check it out. This is so hot, like. It is. It is. So just imagine if we had to produce this inside. Yeah. Yeah. It would be crazy. You're actually creating employment. Well, yes, I would, I would love to How many to think that that's what I do. How many so people have here, you so far? here we have eight women okay. because uh, first we started with two, about two women, mm -hmm. and then we moved on to eight women because the demand was slowly growing. Okay. The the locals were slowly trying to understand the importance of shea butter and all the benefits that it has. So we moved on to eight women here. But we have about 32 women okay. in the lakes region that actually do the collection of the nuts mm. and then we go ship them in here. So now from that, once the oil has, you know, come to the top, the contents that are go to the bottom, the residue basically goes to the bottom. And this is what the oil looks like. This is shea butter oil? Yeah, this is shea butter oil. When it's hot, there's something about shea butter oil. When it's hot, it's a bit darkish. Mm -hmm. Once it cools down, because there's still residue that gets to the bottom, then it clears out. It That's becomes... This dark converts to the yellow, yellow, yes. yellowish color. Yes, once it's solidified, it becomes yellow. Is it like... They, they make shea butter in the northern part of Ghana. I've yeah. never seen one before. This is my first time seeing this in South Sudan. Yeah. I look like a villager, man. <laughs> <laughs> a village. You're probably in a village that doesn't <laughs> produce it. Yeah, but... That's uh, pretty much it. So we do have a storage on the other side uh, where we do the, the final packaging and the production and we'll probably go there. Uh, now this we put some hot uh, because we put it in the fridge so it solidified and it became hard that you could not scoop it. We put some hot oil on it too. Yes. But this, How much do you sell this? This we sell at 4500 which should be the equivalent of $8. Do you ship it abroad? We haven't started shipping abroad, but we're working on that currently because we're now dealing with uh, our standards. The, getting the document from the Bureau of Standards, once we get that, we'll be able to ship it out. Mm, that's impressive, yeah. yeah. Wow. So that is in the lemongrass flavor. Everything is made here. Yes. The only thing that we get from abroad is the packaging because obviously we do not have factories in South Sudan yet that are able to produce for us uh, uh, such packages. And yeah. do you think um, it's worth it to invest in such business? More than you can imagine. First and foremost, the satisfaction that comes from knowing that you're changing lives, you know, even if in a small scale, but you're changing lives somehow. Because these are people that are used to being housewives if they're able to make the little for themselves. Hmm. When a woman makes money, most of it goes back to the family. Yeah. So, yeah, I feel like it is, it's perfect and we could do better. If you can, maybe you can just, just have a look at, at it quickly. Uh, you can already see the oils are coming to the top. Already? Yeah. If you can, maybe let's just get a scoop. It's like a peanut butter. Yes, it becomes like a peanut butter. So you can see that what's on top is the oils. Besides the residue, now that's what gets off once it's cooled down. The oil has already co started coming. We haven't even been 30 minutes into the cooking. Okay. But the longer it takes, the more the oils are maximized. But they have to constantly keep stirring because if they don't stir, you have to be very careful. Be very careful because... Yeah, it's very hot. Yeah. Yeah, so they have to constantly stir it because if they don't stir, are you gonna? <laughs> You're like, what is wrong with this guy? I was afraid for your mouth. <laughs> yeah. So they constantly stir it because if they don't, then uh, it holds the fire, and obviously, you start producing butter that smells burnt. Yeah. I mean, what was the major challenge establishing this here in South Sudan? Well, the major ch now for me, the major challenge was uh, the finances because I financed this individually. So it became a bit complicated. If my pocket is empty, then I cannot facilitate this. The other would be in regards to the logistics, okay. uh, bringing the nuts from the lake states all the way till here because sometimes in the rainy season, the roads are flooded. It makes it almost very difficult that when I have to transport them I have to pay double or, or triple the price that I would use to get the nuts. 
So yeah, that's one of the challenges. But other than that, I think it's it's been smooth because first of all, these women are used to doing the work anyway. They're used to making the shea butter, so it's not a new thing to them. It's not a new thing, it's just the technique that's different from what they're used to making. Yeah, but that's pretty I mean, much yeah, it. Yeah, even reducing stress, you know, because they used to pound everything. Which yes, is yes, I actually haven't showed you the mortar, but uh, they used to use the stone. When you are here, the murkaka. So they used to use the stone to grind. The stone? Yeah. Now, that, that's how they do it locally. So this has replaced the stones and the, the I think it's called the mortar and pestle. Here we call it dong and this is murkaka. Yeah, that is the mortar. So we haven't used it in, in almost forever. They used to grind it. Yeah, they used to grind it manually. So just imagine the amount of time that they need to be able to produce shea butter. So before, when they used to manually do the process, they used to take, I think they produced about 10 liters in a day. 10 liters after working the whole day. But now they're able to produce about 20, 40 liters in a day because we do not want to, to produce. Yeah, I mean, like, it's okay, give me this one. Just, yeah, see, this are the kind of thing that put it in. Put it in. Wow. So it, to take the whole day to just. When you are here, you're going to catch up. You're going to catch up. You're going to catch up. So there's a technique that, that we use to make here when the women are making because if you make alone your hands get tired fast but then they have a, a technique where can you are you I think we have to show you first please all that Esther what's the flow so when you do two people you're not maximizing too much of energy on one person and it's and you're speeding the process they usually do faster than that but Hey, okay. <laughs> so, so, so from here, then they, they transfer it to this Yeah, place. from here, where's the paste? Okay, from here, because this doesn't do... Yeah, it's all it doesn't, it doesn't grind it to be fine. And when it's not finely grinded, no, that, that, that is still very much. Very what, much. Yeah, it's still very much. It, you're supposed to take some time grinding. Oh, grind it. Yeah, pounding it. And then, when I get it, then they put the paste here and start to grind it. Yeah. After that, they still move on to the process. So the oils are coming. We're starting to maximize the oils now. Okay. You can let me, already. Let me, let, me, let me ask you. Yeah, yes. We've got so many um, South Sudanese that live in the diaspora. Yes. That I feel like it's time for them to come back and be part of the chain that we're looking for on the continent. Yeah. If you have a message for them, what would that message be? I would say that first of all, we are a country that is blessed with a vast number of resources, of natural resources. Okay. And there's so much that we can do with it. We cannot all do white collar jobs. I mean, uh, there's too much for us to do that is not involved in the office because you're, causing, you're creating employment even for people that are not so educated okay. and yeah bringing good for the country so there's so much that we can do we should just change our mindset of thinking that everything involves is around the office and definitely you have a message for young africans yes for younger africans as africans we should stop glorifying the idea that everything good comes from out because we have so many things in here that i mean most of the west gets stuff from here like we export shea butter to most of these European countries. Exactly. So there's too much that we can do here to benefit ourselves and also do the greater good for our nation, our continent as a whole. I, so. I, I want to say thank you so much for talking to me, but um, I think I need to do this to help you. Yeah. Um, I know you don't export right now, but can you do me a favor because I have a whole army who, okay. who are willing. I don't think you'll even be able to produce okay. if they ask you for shea butter. If the demand is there, we can definitely produce. We have thank too you. many women. So will you like... Um, do me a favor, send us how do people find you so that they'll be able to reach out to you. So our social media handles are aram, aram slash underscore where 
Uh, I think you'll have to write that. All and right. Aram underscore, we're on both Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. You can just find us there. And we're working on our website as well. It's aramware.shiabata. All right. I want to say thank you so much for talking thank to me. Thank you for coming. And thank you for, you know, being around. Hey, the oil is not hot yet. <laughs> Hi, guys.